Hey, I'm going to go over creating a very basic Box 2D or Unity 2D physics based character controller using Spine uh, that shows character flipping and you know, basic arrow key movement uh, using the Spine Boy uh, sample data that comes with the uh, Unity Spine runtime. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, get Spine Boy into the scene uh, by selecting the Spine Boy skeleton data, choosing right click spine spawn. Uh, so now we've got a spine character out there. I'm gonna put him in the idle pose and tell it to loop just to make sure everything's working correctly. <laughs> Wait for you to do its first compile. There we go. Okay, so the spine skeleton uh, can be flipped about the x-axis on its own. But I know uh, a lot of people like that Paper Mario effect where you see the, uh, the character actually flip to the other side when, they're, uh, when they start heading the other direction. Uh, there's a, a pretty important thing with the Unity physics, and honestly most physics engines, uh, in that you want to try not to rotate or negative scale uh, any kind of collision mesh because it it's, just doesn't really understand uh, and isn't built for, for dealing with that kind of uh, transformation. Uh, so when I deal with uh, 2D characters, I generally create a root object, I'm going to call it player, uh, I'm going to create a child object of that and call that graphics. And I'm going to put the spine boy object uh, with the skeleton animation on it under the graphics object. So anytime I want to add a graphical object that needs to be flipped back and forth, rather than rotating this or rotating a collider from the root level, uh, I'm just going to take the graphics object and flip it the other direction. And all the way up here at the root, at the player level, I'm going to add my physics, in this case the box collider. That fits pretty well with the, uh, the character. Scale text up like that. Okay. So now we've got a character that will fall uh, if we add the rigid body to it. Uh, let's see, what else? I'm also going to choose a uh, fixed angle to prevent the character from rotating. And I'm going to create a cube and switch it from a 3D box collider to a 2D box collider. And scaled up. So now we have a decent ground plane for the character to move around on. Hit the play button, make sure all that works. Looks good. Okay. I'm going to create a script folder. Create a new script called Bind Boy Mover. And open that up in Mono Develop. So, generally when you want to do uh, physics updates, uh, you want to do all of your changes in the fixed update loop, uh, not in the regular update loop. However, if you're taking user input, you generally want to do that in the update loop, so I'm going to do that in there. Uh, I'm also going to create a public variable called speed and set its default value to something like that. Uh, I'm also going to create an x value which should represent the X control for the character. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is set X equal to input axis horizontal axis and then multiply it against the speed of the character or the desired speed of the character. And on fixed update I'm going to take rigid body 2D and set its velocity equal to uh, its current, uh, excuse me, the desired x velocity and its current uh, y velocity. So this will directly link the horizontal speed uh, to the, uh, the rigid body's current speed and also allow the character to fall uh, without being stopped by our script. And of course apply the script uh, directly to the, uh, the root level object. So now when we push the arrow keys, our character should move back and forth. So the next thing I'm going to do is tie uh, the graphics object uh, to the character by creating a public transform variable called graphics and doing a check on update to see if x is greater than or less than 0. So if x is greater than 0, 
then graphics dot local rotation equals quaternion Euler zero 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 else graphics dot local rotation quaternion dot Euler zero one eighty zero and actually this needs to be x is less than zero otherwise the idle state um, if otherwise the idle state will always flip uh, in the left direction uh, so again now that we've got that in oops 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 need to also create a reference to the graphics object so now our character will flip back and forth and it won't have any adverse effects on the collider uh, let's see next thing I'm going to do is get a reference to the skeleton animation by doing skeleton animation public property and now we are also going to set the walk animation versus the idle animation based on the state of the player so if x is greater than zero eh, actually yeah why not we can keep it in here Skeleton animation dot state dot set animation track zero animation name or reference. In this case, it's I think uh, walk and loop. Same deal with the other direction. Except if x is zero, then we want to set the animation back to idle and also let it loop. It's a uh, double check the animation names real quick animation idle is there, animation walk is there, alright we should be good so now we go back to play, ah, forgot one thing again uh, need to set a reference to the skeleton animation there now we hit play oops, so now we have a problem we're constantly setting the animation uh, which means the character is getting constantly restarted so what I'm going to do is create a current animation name. Just initialize it as quote quote. I'm going to create another function called set animation and give it a name and a loop parameter. Let's see. So now in here, if the name we put in is equal to current animation just return, do nothing, we already have the right animation. Uh, actually, I guess we should check all of them, and loop, oh, you know what? Never mind that part. Uh, scale and animation dot state dot set animation track zero name and the loop property. So this way, if we're setting the animation to the same name over and over and over again, uh, then we only apply it when the name changes. And we also say current animation equals name. So rather than doing this whole thing, we just do a set animation idle true. Same deal up here, change these to walk. Now we should be in pretty good shape. Hey, there we go. Character's moving back and forth. Changes animations. Uh, and what I said in the beginning about having the character flip like Paper Mario, might as well do that too. Uh, I'm going to create a new variable called uh, goal rotation and actually initialize that to quaternion identity. And rather than set the graphics uh, local rotation directly, I'm going to set the goal rotation to the desired rotation, or literally to the goal rotation. And at the end of the update loop, I'm going to set the graphics local rotation equal to quaternion uh, dot lerp from graphics local rotation to goal rotation, and then give it, I don't know, five times delta times some arbitrary number to smooth it out a little bit. Uh, so now when our character moves back and forth, we should get a nice flipping animation like that. 
uh, on the graphics only. Um, and it's really important that we're only affecting the graphics with these uh, transformations because the physics objects do not take kindly to being rotated, especially outside of the physics loop. Okay, that pretty much sums that up. Uh, I hope that helps out. See ya.